There's a valley in Spain called Harama. It's a place that we all know so well. It was there that we fought for Spain's freedom, and most of our brave comrades fell. Oh, we're proud of the Lincoln Battalion and the stand at Madrid that they made. Oh, they fought like true sons of the soil as part of the 15th Brigade. Por favor, una palabra más. Yo lucha en la guerra contra Franco. Gracias. She's, she said she didn't understand. I said I fought in the war against Franco, and she said no entiendo. <laughs> Shortly, late, shortly after that, I, I learned about the international brigades that were fighting against Hitler in Spain. These people were much more politically you know, involved than I was. But uh, I could identify with, a, with an aspect of it that was so personal. So I became a reconnaissance scout and an observer for the British battalion along the Ebro River. And then about the 1st of September, I went back to the front and joined the Lincoln Battalion and a week later I was wounded. And uh, I was hit from over this way someplace. It, it came and hit my arm and uh, laterally. And I remember falling back and I saw this fountain of blood come up over my head and I hollered for a stretcher bearer, sanitario, sanitario. I was very concerned because it was my right hand and I was a pianist, but that, the, the pain and the, uh, the trauma the, just blotted everything out. I landed New Year's Eve in, in New York on the SS Harding with about 40 other wounded men. And of course, uh, instant drunk, and immediately, you know. From 39 to 46 or seven, uh, a day didn't go by with, with I didn't drink uh, quite a bit, and sometimes an awful lot. I wonder how I went through it. After eight years of it, a friend of mine said, you're killing yourself with alcohol. Uh, this is better. And he introduced me to heroin. And uh, just about in time, too. Because with my appetite, appetites, you can, is there a plural for plural? If there is, those are my appetites. to actually <laughs> take root anywhere. They just flitted from place to place, and I was one of the flits. Yeah, it was, it was all amphetamine. Nobody had time for, for heroin or morphine. It slowed you down too much. Between 47 and 75, I, I did a little bit of like two years, but it was always petty stuff. I got busted twice and did time for possession of marijuana. I mean, all this time I'm using heroin and probably buying and selling it, but when I got busted, it was for pot. Think of it uh, this way. 
I'm into art and music and poetry and uh, all sorts of things, piano playing, singing. And 20 years go by and uh, I'm still doing what I can, but I realize I'm doing less and less of what I really want to do because most of my energy is going into getting the money and getting the dope and staying being high. I've been working on myself. It ended with this procedure. I'd bring the dope home and I'd say, now you're cooking the dope. i talk to myself while I'm doing it. Now you're tying up. Now you draw up the dope. And now there's the vein. And now you're going to hit yourself only, I'd say. And now the door came in and the cops are there. And now you're laying on the floor at Cook County Jail sick. And then I would hit myself with the drug. I brought the most powerful negative train of thought I could conceive of in immediate proximity with the drug itself. And it was not the same. It began to change. I began to get away from it. Thank you.